Hi everyone, this is Sean. In this video, I'll show you probably one of the simplest demo on model context protocol, which is in short MCP. It's pretty much a buzzword now on pretty much all social media. Let's just jump right into an example that I made. And at the end, I'll show you how to set it up as well as some of my thoughts on the potential impact of MCP in the AI industry. So I already set up uh, my local tools with this Anthropic Cloud desktop app. And as you can see that like, I've got this little hammer there and I got a bunch of tools that I set up uh, locally, which I'll show you the code later. But uh, basically the task that we're gonna do right now is that we're gonna ask it to uh, read my, some of my uh, directories of the documents. And so you can see that like, I've got list directory, read file, search file, all these little tools, as well as things like, um, you know, read my WhatsApp directory, right? So let's just ask the question real quick right here. So I'm gonna say, what are, on my desktop. Okay, I'll help you check. And I need to allow access to this. Now it's using this tool called list underscore directory. And after using uh, the functional call for the local files, you can see that it made a list of all of my um, folder names, which is listed right here on my desktop. And then um, I could potentially just ask a follow-up question to be like, what chats do I have in my WhatsApp folder? So now it's doing using the list file, list or directory function again. And then it was using the uh, another tool called find WhatsApp chat. And now it's listing my um, file names. Okay, good. Let's see if it's accurate. I think it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, I've got three files here. And one of them is called 2025 MIT Early Stage Founder WhatsApp Chat. Okay, so what were, what were the top three mostly discussed startup ideas in the MIT Early Stage Founder Chat? So I've got the context. It's now using the function called refile, and it's reading the exact file I was talking about. And after that, it's gonna give me the um, sort of the explanation on um, what was in the file. So let's see, uh, the first thing was AI for manufacturing. Makes sense. A lot of the uh, MIT founders are hardware or hard tech founders. And secondly, there's a med tech because I think, yeah, Boston has a lot of uh, healthcare industry and pharmaceutical industry, and as well as, you know, medical devices. So that makes sense. The third one's dementia patient monitoring solution. Okay, you saw what happened. It's like, I was asking a question to Claude and then Claude was sort of just going through my local files and then read the files for me and then just summarize whatever I want, right? So I'll explain what happened exactly with the tools. So let's open this little hammer one more time. You can see all these tools being defined here. And the way we, the way we did it is that um, I was listing all of these tools in um, this file called files.py, right? And then let's take a look at this uh, file real quick. So it's basically setting up an MCP uh, server, fast MCP server um, under this tools folder called files. And those were imported from MCP, which is the open source protocol that Anthropic has launched. And basically I have this function that sort of just understand what kind of path we should be going through. And then um, we're using these decorators to sort of define the functions we need. The first one is the list directory. We can see like it's, it's just a basic Python function that allows people, sorry, to, to um, you know, if you input the path in the string and then the return is sort of the content from that string, right? Um, so it basically list whatever that's in your directory. And then the second one was search files. It's search based on the pattern, um, the path and the maximum results. Right, and then you have like a read file, um, a MCP tool as well to read whatever the, the file is about. And then you have this find WhatsApp chat. So it kind of trying to understand whether this file is a WhatsApp file. You validate if it's a WhatsApp file. If it is, then uh, try to you know return it. And then you can get the WhatsApp directory. And then eventually just put it in like a mcp.run in a, in a main um, if statement. So yeah, it, it looks really, really simple, right? And I was following exactly the uh, introduction from um, Anthropic. So if you land on Anthropic's introductory page, you can see that they explain a bunch of things, which I'm not the most patient person to read. <laughs> but uh, if you click into their uh, MCP context protocol, 
So actually, I've already got it right here. Uh, I'll just open it for you right now again. Uh, they have a better explanation here, which is most of the social media I was talking about. Think of NCP like basically USB-C to port AI applications and make sure like, it's basically like it's a standardized way to connect your devices to various peripherals and accessories. Um, and then you can see that basically Claude interface was serving as you know just a chatbot. And then if you ask questions, it's just like many of those uh, multi-agent tools where if you ask a question, they're going to plan and start deciding what, which tools they want to use. I think NCP for me, number one, is that it helped to really uh, have a wide range of tools to select from, right? So perhaps you don't have to write every single tool yourself. You could potentially just um, go somewhere to, um, uh, there, there must be like an app store for MCPs, and uh, you basically just um, handpick some of the tools that you need as an MCP tool, and then you can just put it into your local files, into your um, MCP client side, which in my case was uh, the Claude chat. And then um, it basically just, you can natural, use your natural language to interact with it, right? And the way to set it up is that you can click into this thing called for server developers. And all I did was really simple. It was um, a few steps. Number one is that you just do this to set up an environment. And then you initiate a folder in their example, they allow they were trying to allow Claude to query sort of weather by uh, the state in the US. And you create a virtual environment because it's a Python. And then you add this MCP client, HTTPX. And then eventually you create this file called weather.py. We also have it right here. Um, so I have this file called weather.py. And then there are um, two, basically two MCP tools. One of them is called get alerts. The other one is called um, get forecast. And I'll show you a quick example of how to use it. But let's finish this um, real quick as well. After you set up things like the above, you can create this weather.py just like me um, earlier, and then just copy paste this code into it. Very similar logic, you set up this fast MCP server, and then you add these functions that are needed for the MCP tools, and then just define the decorator MCP tools. And just I literally just basically copy pasted all of these into the file weather.py, and then just run it. Um, so one thing you need to be careful about is you need to put this thing into this directory called, um, basically, if you're using a Mac, it's in your library application support, Claude, and then in this JSON file called cloud-desktop.config. Let's find out. So we're going to go to slash library slash uh, application, application supports right here. Let's click into it, and then we can find Claude. Uh, Claude is right here, and then there is a file called class underscore desktop config. It's right here, and if you don't have it, you have to sort of add this in manually. And you can see that I have MCP servers embedded into this JSON, and I have two things. One is called weather, another one is called files, right? So for weather, it's basically like um, the example on the main website, and you just need to add this to make sure that you let the computer know where MC, this uh, NCP tools are uh, positioned at so that your client side Claude interface can understand and, and call the functions, right? So I'm going to use um, the same tool to ask the question. So let's start a new chat. I want to know the temperature in San Francisco today. Okay, now it's using get forecast. So it's checking the San Francisco latitude and longitude. And they returned that on April 9th, the temperature is 72 uh, Fahrenheit with the sunny conditions. Okay, cool. So that was basically the example of server side MCP tool and how you define it using Python. And if you want, you can build this client developer as well. And then basically it's like an alternative to using Claude directly. And um, eventually you can end up having um, sort of a chat interface like this in a terminal, just like uh, Llama. I haven't tried it myself, but I think it's pretty straightforward. So I think basically this is an interesting tool to have. Um, I saw that a lot of people were discussing what is the exact difference between NCPs and you know the uh, previous wave of uh, tool calling or you know like calling APIs using a tool. I think there's no like fundamental difference to be honest. It's just that 
somehow <laughs> it, there's a protocol being launched by Anthropic and saying, hey, everyone, um, according to this um, open source standard, can we just all use the same thing? And if you just add this mcp.tool decorator over here, basically you can just brand your tool as like mcp enabled. And perhaps, you know, somebody else who are writing AI agents out there can just use your tools or call your API in one of their own MCP tool um, local directory over here, right? And I think, I think, I think this could be unleashing so much potential if, um, if the cloud uh, drives and all those online um, storage companies are enabling them. So for example, previously I was using um, cloud to query from my local files. But what if, imagine um, Google Drive and um, iCloud Drive allow people to use um, their MCP right there, as long as you authenticate, say, using Google OAuth or iPhone OAuth, then um, your AI agents will be able to just read, um, of course, under the user's authorization to fetch the documents they need and um, you know um, digest information and fetch context which is probably exactly the same as, you know, a lot of the AI tools these days that allow you to connect to your Google Drive. Um, but, you know, perhaps the potential is that this could allow, you know, more people to have, um, 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 to be focused on, you know, building applications rather than thinking about what's the right way to write these kind of code. You just literally just use um, fast MCP. Um, so I think that's the short term short-term um, direct impact I could see, which is making it easy for everyone to build, uh, for tools to be called by other tools, by other agents. But in the longer term, I think um, there could be a lot more more personalized use cases that can be built as long as you know uh, the MCP took off and has gained a lot of trust from the market and people are willing to share um, the information of the API through MCP. I'm still, I'm still being cautious about if you know this is just another trend word um, because it's easy to follow the buzzword, follow the trend, and think that this is the future. But eventually, adoption, uh, monetization, marketing could play a big role in any new technology or any new waves. And by the way, MCP is not even new. It was launched. Uh, well, it was launched in November last year. It's been like uh, five months. I was a little late to this, but you know, in March I saw a lot of people were talking about NCP. But I think, yeah, um, it's an interesting technology. And um, the next video, uh, I will probably add this to my um, open source full stack app, uh, where you know I was using a lot of Stripe and Superbase in my code. And some people I recommended that I should integrate with Superbase and Stripe's NCP because you can literally allow it to um, sort of tell you exactly what attributes, say for example, what kind of situations there could be or statuses there could be when a user is subscribing to a new service, right? Instead of just going back to their documentation and check hand manually, you can just, um, while you're t coding in your editor, you'll be able to know that, right? Cool, so yeah, I hope this is helpful and um, I'll try more things and if I learn something new, I'll share with, uh, with you guys again. Cheers, thank you.